In last week's video, I talked about a couple of plugins that allow you to recreate the experience of a mix room with headphones. And two of those plugins were Abbey Road Studio 3 from Waves and Stephen Slade's VSX. And I also said that I actually prefer Stephen Slade's plugin over the Waves plugin simply because, at least to my ears, it gives the better impression. So it gives the better binaural rendering, at least that's the way I hear it. Now, uh, Waves has one big advantage, and that is that it adds the ability to do head tracking. So uh, what you can essentially do with the Waves plugin is you can use a little head tracker, put it on your headphones, and then uh, the plugin will actually know the exact position of your head and give you the impression of your audio according to the position of your head, which increases the interactivity of the immersive experience. Let's call it that way. Now, unfortunately, Stephen Slave's plugin can't do that. However, we are able to actually add it to Stephen Slate, and this is what we're going to do today. Now, be aware that what I'm going to do is a little bit of a hack. It's actually quite a bit of a hack. Uh, so in some sense, it's an approximation, um, but it works really, really well. I was actually surprised on how good it is. It is on par with the experience that you're getting with Apple AirPods, for example, but it is a hack. So just be aware of that. Now, with that being said, let's get right to hacking some uh, head tracking to Stephen Slate's plugin. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design, and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And since you're already at it, also please don't forget to press the like button, especially if you get any value out of my videos. It really helps out the channel and it makes my videos more visible to other people. Thank you. So let's get started. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use the Stephen Slate's uh, headphones because we're going to once again uh, work with Stephen Slate's VSX plugin. And as I've also already added the uh, Waves NX head track on top because we're going to use Waves NX as our head tracking software. Now, uh, be aware that uh, what I'm going to use today is a Mac and I'm going to use Ableton Live. However, if you're not a Mac user or not an Ableton Live user, the same principles would still apply so you can go through the same procedures that I'm going through. Uh, you might need to use different types of software, you might need to use a different type of head tracker, but the uh, what I'm going to do here applies to essentially any door and any digital audio workstation. I've just uh, decided to go with the Mac and with Ableton Live because that, quite frankly, is the easiest and most straightforward way to implement what I'm going to implement. Now let's first have a look at what I'm actually talking about, what we want to achieve here. And for this purpose, I've opened up an Ableton Live session with the loop that I also used last week. And I've uh, also uh, loaded up Abbey Road Studio 3, just to give you some idea of what I'm talking about in terms of head tracking. And let's first have a listen to the actual loop as a quick reminder on how that actually sounds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add a mix room plugin and I'm going to start with Abbey Road Studio 3 just to demonstrate the head tracking capabilities of that. And uh, in order to enable head tracking in Abbey Road Studio 3, what you need to do is first of all, you need to connect the head tracker with your computer. And this is done through a, uh, a little uh, application. This is the Waves head tracker application. Um, I need to uh, turn on the head tracker, of course. So let's just turn it on. And as soon as I turned it on, the status bar should turn green, which uh, it did and then kind of disappeared again, but that's fine. So here we are. And then let's go back into um, live. And uh, we have already enabled head tracking here. We just need to make sure that the tracking device is set to NX tracker. And uh, that will now allow me to actually do some head tracking. So let's uh, turn on the plugin and let's play that sound again. Now, I'm currently having it in the wrong uh, ear, and that is because I have not yet calibrated. So let's calibrate. And the system is now able to track my head. So if I'm turning my head to the uh, left, you will hear it as a panning to the right. And if I'm turning to the right, you will hear it as a panning to the left. And this is actually fairly impressive because it allows you to really get the fully immersive experience as if there would be two speakers in front of me. And this is essentially what we want to replicate with Stephen Slate's VSX, uh, even though Stephen Slate's VSX doesn't really have a head tracking 
capability built in. So we're going to add that with, once again, a little hack. Now the basic idea of that hack is something that I've already done in some of the other videos previously, and that is uh, because we can't really uh, integrate head tracking directly into, into the um, Stephen Slate's VSX plugin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead uh, rotate the room around me. So instead of kind of moving the head, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the room. So I'm going to use a binaural panner ahead of Stephen Slate's VSX uh, in order to rotate the room and then kind of run it through Stephen Slate's VSX. And if I'm doing that correctly, I should get this very same impression as if I would actually be tracking my head with Stephen Slate's VSX. Now the plugin that I'm going to use in order to rotate the room is uh, Novo Notes 3DX. This is a binaural panner and uh, you could use technically any binaural panner, however, that one works best for this particular purpose. We will see in a minute why that actually is the case. Let me just uh, delete the Abbey Roads plugin here. We don't need that anymore. And let's also make sure that the uh, heavy head tracker is closed. So, okay, that's also closed. Uh, and uh, essentially the main idea is that we are going to use this plugin in order to uh, take in the left and right position and reposition them in three-dimensional space in relationship to the way I'm moving my head. Now, in order to demonstrate what I'm actually talking about, let's let's just make a couple of adjustments. Well, first of all, we need to make sure that uh, we're having a stereo input. Uh, that means that we are set, getting the left and the right speakers and uh, also make sure that we have the stereo set, out, the output set to stereo. We don't want to have binaural because that would actually duplicate the binaural rendering. We don't want to have that. We just want to have a regular stereo out. And the, uh, in this particular setting, what it really is doing, it is just kind of repositioning with recalculating the signal as if you would move the speakers. That's essentially what it is doing. Um, in order to see uh, what I'm talking about, let me just kind of turn on the advanced feature here of this plugin. And let's just uh, change the width a little so that we see that a little better, right? So we have here we have the left and right speakers that are coming in from the signal. And what we really want to do is uh, we want to recalculate them in such a way that they are kind of sort of virtual speakers in front of me that are sort of are locked to my head. And with those virtual speakers, we are going to then do the banal rendering in Stephen Slate's VSX. So if I'm now moving the left and right channel uh, to left and right, I will then get sort of the same experience as if I would actually be moving the head and the speakers would be fixed. That, that, is, the, that is the basic idea. So let me just kind of set that back to zero here. Um, and uh, in order to do that, one thing that we want to make sure, and this is actually the reason why I'm using this particular plugin, we want to make sure that in the base position, so in, in this core position, the one that I'm having right now, where I'm just looking in front, uh, right ahead in front of me, I don't want this plugin to have any effect on the audio signal. And this is the reason why I'm using uh, Novo Note 3DX, because I can actually kind of set the parameters in such a way that if I'm just uh, staring right ahead of me, that plugin has no effect whatsoever. It's just kind of passing through the signal and it will only take or it will only kind of create an effect once I'm actually moving uh, my head or once I'm actually moving my my, uh, my 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 speakers in this particular setup. Now in order to get that effect what you need to do is you need to set the width to maximum so that is three so let's just kind of set the width uh, completely up to three. And the second thing we need to do is because the plugin essentially attenuates the signal a little, we need to increase the gain somewhat. So let me just kind of create a group here. And let's just add in this group, uh, in this chain, uh, the setting. And we need to add it up to 6 dB. So kind of change that here to 6 dB and change the width to three. And we will see that if I have set it to that particular setting with everything else here set to zero, the rotation here set to zero, your pitch roll uh, set to zero, um, the plugin actually has no effect on the signal. And this is important because if I'm looking straight ahead, I don't want that plugin actually to have any effect on what uh, Stephen Slate's plugin is doing. So let's just have a brief listen on how that sounds so that we actually get an impression if that is actually what, uh, what I'm expecting it to do. So let's just play that. So this is with the uh, 3DX on and let's just turn that off. And as you can see, it's not having any effect, at least not a noticeable one. I can't hear anything. Now for those of you who have trained ears, you might be able to uh, hear a little bit of a difference, but at least in my, uh, my, my kind of uh, amateur ears, I, I, I can't hear any difference whatsoever. And this is good enough for us because, because in the end, uh, what we're doing here is an approximation. We just want to make it realistic enough to 
to actually make sense. Now, in order to demonstrate what I want to do next, um, let's just do the whole rotation manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I need to enable that plugin here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to play that sound and I'm going to uh, make the uh, head rotation manually so that we get some idea on how that will actually sound in the end. So let's just uh, start that loop again. And the idea is that if I'm moving my head to the left, I will need to um, increase the yaw to the, to the positive side. And that is sort of the effect that we want to achieve with head tracking. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, start up a software that can change the Bluetooth information that is coming from the head tracker into OSC messages. And if you are on a Mac, there's a little piece of software that you can download for free, and I'm going to post the link in the description below that allows you to do that for the Waves and X head track. Unfortunately, that software is not available for Windows. So if you are on Windows, you might need to use a different head tracker with a different piece of software. But the basic principles are essentially the same. Now, uh, so let's start up that application. It's called NX OSC. Once again, I'm going to post a link in the description below and uh, and let's see if we can connect. Uh, I might need to restart my Bluetooth head tracker. So let's just start that up again. And now we have that uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth head tracker here in my list and I'm going to choose that device and I, I already see that sort of I'm getting the tracking information here. And it also tells me the OSC messages that are sent out. So in our, in our particular case, what we really need is we need the Y information from the NX OSC slash Y XYZ um, message that is sent out. Um, and uh, this Y information essentially is the is the yaw that we're going to use. Uh, and we need we will probably need to reset that because one, once again, these trackers, the, uh, they have a tendency to drift a little. So so you once in a, every once in a while, you need to kind of reset it in order to kind of make sure that everything is, is essentially set to the correct orientation. And I'm actually kind of really getting the correct rotation and the correct position of my head. So, um, so this is really the first step. So now I've already connected my head tracker and uh, it is kind of receiving OSC messages. So the next thing I need to do is I need to turn these OSC messages or I need to kind of take in these OSC messages within my digital audio workstation, in my particular case, Ableton, and I need to forward them to the parameter in 3D. X and uh, for that in Ableton, there is a very nice Max for Life device. Let me just close that uh, plugin here. Uh, there's a very nice Max for Life device, and that Max for Life device is called, and I'm going to post the link in the description below OSC input device. It is available for free. And it's very, very simple. All it really does is it takes in an OSC message and uh, it kind of forwards it. It allows you to map that OSC message onto a parameter in your digital audio workstation. So let's drop that onto our little um, kind of track here. And uh, the uh, we already know the path. The path is essentially the NX OSC slash XYC. So let's kind of punch that in here. Uh, NX OSC slash X. Y, C. Uh, as soon as I've punched it in, I already kind of received that information. Now, um, you need to make sure that the port is correct. Now, in, in this particular case, because NXOSC has the default port to be 8000, uh, you can, and, and that particular plugin has the same default port, it already works, but you might need to kind of make sure that the port is set correctly if you don't see anything here. And uh, the next thing is we, we don't really want the first argument, we actually want the second argument. And for the second argument, we just need to punch in the number one here. And uh, that will then essentially take the second argument. And I can already see if I'm moving my head to the left that the yaw here is kind of uh, giving me the correct information. And then I need to set the minimum and maximum values. And with this minimum and maximum values, you can um, also kind of uh, fine tune things a little bit. If you choose these values to be larger, then essentially it will essentially have less of a rotating effect. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply set them to the standard values, which in my case would be minus 180 and 180. And then the last thing I need to do is I simply need to map that parameter to uh, my plugin here. And in particular, I need to map it to the yaw. So let's just kind of take that here and map that to the yaw. And as I'm doing that, you already see that the yaw is getting my head information. I'm, I'm rotating my head. I'm, I have not yet kind of, well, actually kind of, it is pretty good. So it's, if I'm looking straight ahead, we are at a three, three degrees. So let me just reset that. Um, and uh, and I think that that is fine. So let me just see how that looks in 3DX. And uh, as you can see, 
it is already reacting to my head rotations and it is actually already doing that in the correct order. So, so kind of, I, I, if I'm moving to the, to the right, actually the speakers need to move to the left and vice versa. So, so kind of it already is doing it correctly. Otherwise I would have to switch the, um, the minus and the, the minimum and min maximum kind of values in the, in the application, but this is already fine. So if I'm, if I'm now, uh, playing the audio loop again, uh, I should already get sort of that impression that I also had with Swift Cinex plugin. So if I'm essentially moving my head, I essentially already get this immersive experience. And once again, you can fine tune by changing the min and max value in order to kind of make it a little bit kind of more confined to the space in front of you. But that's something that you have to kind of just play around with what, what essentially sounds best for you. And the last thing now is really to add Stephen Slate's VSX. Uh, that's all there is to it. So let me just kind of add Stephen Slate's VSX here. And as you can see, you can actually do that for very much any uh, binaural rendering plugin. So if you don't w like to use VSX, uh, this is a trick with which you can uh, add head tracking to any binaural renderer whatsoever. So, uh, but well, yeah, once again, we are going to use Stephen Slate's VSX. So let me just go to Stephen Slate here and let's add that here. And uh, this should now give me the correct impression. So let me just play that now. And I'm using the midfield. Let me, let me just change the room. I don't like that room. Let me just change that to the. That's that's actually my favorite. And as you can see, or well here, if I'm turning my head to the left, the speakers actually maintain their position in front of me. And because the plugin that we used in order to kind of change the, um, or in order to rotate the room, has no effect if I'm looking straight ahead, the impression that I'm getting if I'm looking straight ahead is exactly as if I would not have any head tracking whatsoever. It's, it's, it's exactly what Stephen Slates would produce. And this is surprisingly good. Now, once again, this is a hack uh, because we are actually, what we are really doing is we are recalculating the audio with respect to different speaker positions and then doing the banal rendering. This is actually not the way it's supposed to be done. However, uh, the results are surprisingly good. They are about the same quality as if the, that you would get from pretty much any other head tracking um, application. In particular, I personally think it even sounds better than the AirPods uh, if you have them in spatial audio mode. Now, if you're interested in me showing you how to do that with a different digital audio workstation and a different operating system, so for example, you're a Windows user and you, can't, you don't really have access to NX OSC or you don't have Ableton and you don't have access to this OSC to um, mapping plugin, this, this, this Max for Life device, let me know and I can uh, create another video if you want to. But in essence, it's actually fairly straightforward. All you really have to do is you have to use 3DX, uh, Novo Node 3DX, with the parameters that I showed you, and then simply add a, um, a solution that kind of turns your head tracker into OSC messages and then uh, a plugin that takes the OSC messages and maps them on to 3DX and that's all you have to do. Uh, that's uh, how simple it really is. Now this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching my videos, really appreciate it. And uh, you know, with that being said, see you at the next video.